So just a quick forward, um, I struggled with what to call this for a little bit, but uh, I settled on Dutch bucket. It could also be a Wilma system. So enjoy the video. Welcome back to Who Chose. Today on Who Chose, we're going to create this. This is a super compact Dutch bucket hydroponic system. Let's get to it. First of all, though, if you enjoy my videos and want to enable me to make more videos, please consider subscribing and heading over to our Patreon page, my Patreon page. And uh, it just allows me to make videos that, you know, don't align with YouTube's interests. All right, let's do this. So today you'll need a knife, a drill with a reasonably sized drill bit, uh, at least large enough to get four millimeter piping through. So this is four millimeter flexi tube, a T piece, some barbed off takes, you'll need some zip ties, weed mat that has water permeability. So that's really important. You don't want a uh, weed mat that is waterproof. Uh, you're gonna need flexi tube. Now this is different to normal poly irrigation pipe and it is now my preferred way of running hydroponic systems. It doesn't kink as easy and it's just better product all around. Still UV resistant, so you can use it outside and not worry about it. You'll need a pump and you'll also need a digital timer for this one. Uh, you can run it full time, I probably wouldn't recommend that. I think that the 15 minute increments on mechanical timers will probably to be too much um, for this system and will run probably a uh, three minute watering cycle uh, every so often, depending on the stage of your plant's growth. You also need bulk amounts of perlite. Now you can buy the five liter bags of perlite, but this is a 30 liter container and it's gonna get real expensive real fast. So you can buy bulk amounts of perlite from any nursery supply store. This was 30 Australian dollars for 100 liters. So it's a budget friendly way of getting your hands on that perlite. You'll also need two containers that stack on each other in such a way that they don't fall into each other. Now, these style of containers are available at Bunnings for Australian customers. And as I said, in my compact flood and drain hydroponic system, uh, they're a pretty universal design that you would be able to get pretty much all over the world. So let's get to drilling the holes on the bottom of our top container. So when drilling these holes, you just want to take into consideration that the top of this container will get heavy uh, with plant matter and uh, the water that fills up the gaps in the perlite. So just make sure that you keep the integrity of the container. So with my containers, they have ribs. I'm gonna just do holes spaced out fairly widely along the ribs, not actually interfering with the structure of the container and giving more than enough drainage to the top of the container so it can drain directly into the reservoir which will lie underneath the container. It helps if you use um, not a blunt drill bit. Wow, that must be real blunt. Now the holes are drilled, we can go ahead and set up the irrigation system on the top bed. So for the irrigation system, we're going to run the irrigation up the side with the largest gap, which is also where you'll be able to fill and drain your Dutch bucket compact system. So flip it over and we're going to take a length of our 30 millimeter flex tube and we'll run the flex tube along the internal part of the lip of the container and run enough of it so that it completely circles the grow bed. So I'm just adding in uh, two elbow pieces to the build because uh, as you can see on this side, 
there's no problem with the hose rounding the corner because it gives it enough uh, flex to move. But with this side, uh, you've got a kink which will slow down the flow. So I'm just going to add in a corner piece so we can get around that kink. All right, so now that our tubing's underneath the lip of the container, we're gonna drill in some holes along the top edge of the container. Now, the holes positioning depends on the size of your plants uh, and how many plants you've got. So if you've got one plant in the center, you just need one hole, uh, or if you've got two plants, you might only need two holes, uh, but I'm gonna put in uh, four holes for four plants and that will allow you to run the tubing to your plant and stick it in uh, at, the, at the root level. All right, remove the tubing from underneath the edging first. And then we can just put our holes in. Now that our tubing is in place, we can just use a skewer to make a hole where you want your irrigation pipe to go into the larger 13 millimeter tubing. And then we can insert our barbed offtakes. Now we can attach on our four millimeter flexible tubing in the appropriate length that you want to reach the plants in the grow bed. So just insert your tubing through the holes that you've drilled. Put the tubing back up into the lip on the container. There we go. All right, now it's time to cut some weed mat to the size of the bottom of your container, maybe with a little bit up the side so that we can stop the perlite falling back through the holes you've drilled in the bottom and into the reservoir where it might cause the pump uh, to clog up. So now I'm gonna take this outside, fill it up with perlite because I don't particularly want a whole cloud of uh, perlite in my house. And you also get a sneak peek at one of my upcoming videos. <laughs> There we go. That is the grow bed part of the build complete. So now we can set up the pump and the timer so we can time our irrigation cycles within this grow bed system. So to set up the pump, all we need to do is place our grow bed on top of our reservoir and then measure a section of pipe coming from our T piece down to the bottom of the reservoir. Now I always do a little bit further um, just so that it can be lying on its side uh, because if this piping bends, you don't want it to pull it out of the water. So now we can attach our pump to the T piece on the feeders on the irrigation system part of our grow bed. And our pump just goes straight into the reservoir like so. So our pump is at the bottom of our reservoir feeding the irrigation pipe that runs around the edge of our grow bed and then goes into our feeders, which will then be placed at the base of each of our plants. 
Let's fill up the reservoir and make sure the system drains properly. All right, so I filled up the reservoir, not full, uh, just because this is just demonstrating how it works and I didn't want to break my back. But now we can place the pump into the res. and see how the system drains. There we go. All the pipes are working. Pumping water and what will be nutrient into the system. And you can just place your irrigation hoses wherever you need to irrigate your plants. So the benefit of this system is that every time you irrigate your plants, you're forcing oxygen out of the perlite mix and then replenishing the nutrients and water within that mix. And once the system is then on its off cycle, the whole lot drains and allows that whole system to pull oxygen back into the spaces where the perlite once had nutrient solution. Now the benefit over flood and drain is that it never completely floods. So there's no point in this system where there will not be oxygen available to those roots. And as you can see underneath, we've got all the water draining back down through into the reservoir where the cycle continues. And all we need to control the irrigations is a digital timer or a smart plug. And then you can dial in your irrigation times depending on the crop you're growing and the medium you've got inside this system. One of the problems I was sorting out during the build of this video is uh, the material that I needed to use to let the water permeate through the bottom without letting the perlite out. So a better material than this weed matting would be something like a, a fiberglass uh, insect screening um, or something that's a little bit better at letting water through because uh, when I made this, it actually um, caused the perlite to float uh, because the water was pooling under the weed matting. So if I had to make it again, I would make it with uh, something more permeable than this weed matting. Uh, learn from my mistakes. Um, I'm not going to go and rebuild this system now because it actually works. So I'll just have to do smaller irrigation increments uh, to allow that water to get through that weed matting because the weed matting, uh, it does let the water through, just not fast enough. So now we can go ahead and plant some plants within our system. Here's a watermelon. And there you have it. That's how you make a super compact Dutch bucket hydroponic system. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Who Chose. If you did, like, subscribe, and consider joining us on Patreon and allowing us to create more niche content. Allowing me to create more niche content. I keep saying us. Happy hydroponicking! <laughs>